Welcome to Project Build. In today's episode, we're looking at removing the rear bodywork of the smart car to give us better access to the to the engine and to those components. And then we're going to look at dropping the rear subframe so that we can get to the top of the motor more easily. Now, the first thing that I'm doing here is uh, removing the fender liner on the passenger side of the car, the right-hand side in North America. And that's going to give me access uh, to look at some of the components, first of all, and then to start dropping that subframe. So let's get into it. So here's a good view if you want to familiarize yourself with the smart car a little bit. One really important component is your secondary air injection pump right here. And what I mean by important is just important to know where it is and how to remove it because chances are that is going to fail while you own your smart car if it hasn't been replaced already so that's where that pump is you just take that liner out uh, ideally if you have the the extended bolts to be able to lower that subframe you can get at it a lot easier uh, to replace that uh, other things we want to notice here is just you can see the uh, alternators in behind here what i'll do is i'll take this uh there's a little mud guard here that we can take off and we'll be able to see the serpentine belt and that whole assembly a little bit better. But for now, uh, just to know where that pump is and the nut on the top of your shock here so that when I go to change that shock out, I can get that nut off. The reason I've got the guard off right now is I wanna hit all these things with uh, penetrating lube and get them hopefully ready to be loosened off if I need to take them off. Pretty straightforward getting this little uh, plastic shield off. Uh, you just have these two little plastic plugs that go up into the subframe. You can pull the heads of those out a little bit and then the whole assembly should just come right out of the subframe. And you can get rid of that piece for now. A little bit easier to see what's going on now that we have that cover off. We can see our crank pulley right here in the middle uh, just by our oil filter. We've got our serpentine belt tensioner up here and uh, we need a special tool to get that out of the way so we can slip that belt off and get the alternator off. And then there's a second belt on the cars that are equipped with uh, air conditioning. There's a secondary belt uh, there that runs the AC compressor over here at the front of the motor. And um, yeah, we'll be able to get into there. Uh, luckily I have the bolts to drop this whole subframe down. So that's gonna make working on that alternator a lot easier. With all the work to do on the car, uh, brakes, suspension, having to pull that alternator out. I wanna have a good look at that serpentine belt system because the tensioner might need to be replaced. And with everything I need to do and getting the, the body work off as well, I figured rather than uh, picking away at little pieces at a time, I should just get right into it, drop that subframe uh, in the back so I can get really good access to the motor and pull all this body work off so I can kind of get in and have a better look at that little bit of crash damage that was at the front, make sure that everything's okay there. And also I need to get the rear body work off so I can get at this tail light and give it a good clean out uh, with the mouse nest in there. So um, with that in mind, I'm just gonna launch right into it and pull the bodywork out. I've already started a little bit by uh, pulling the side skirts off. Uh, and the reason I did that is because just where I'm lifting the car right now to keep it uh, off the ground, uh, was leaning on the, on the skirts a little bit. So I had to uh, mess around with my jacking a little bit there, get the side skirts off because they need to come off in order to take the front and rear body work off. Um, I put my jacks back under it. I've got the belly pan just sort of partially detached and hanging down. And now I should be good to go take off all that body work and uh, get that subframe out. So that was my first time taking apart the rear bodywork on a 451, which I've had 
a number of 451. So I guess that says good things about uh, how often I had to get in and do this kind of a service to them. But I did get hung up on a couple of things trying to get these body panels off um, because I'm used to working on the 450s, the previous generation of smart car. And in that case, everything kind of unbolts and you take that whole rear end off as like one piece. And this one, you kind of have to separate it, or at least I thought it was a lot easier, or that's what I ended up doing. I don't know if it's easier or not. Um, I separated each panel, so the, the center and each side I was taking off like one piece at a time. Um, and one thing I got hung up on a little bit was trying to get the leading edge of the panel off because I didn't realize that these are just sort of a, a fit, like a press into a hole kind of a fit on these. So I, I had the panel here and I had the whole back end of it loose because I took the hardware out and I'm trying to figure out, you know, how to get that leading edge off. I was having a peek in because I have the fender liner out of this side and I could see this piece of plastic here and I thought maybe it was just uh, like needed to go forward or needed to go backwards in order to slot into like a little holder. But it's these little tabs that just sort of pop in and pop out. Once I figured that out and got my hand in uh, at the leading edge here and kind of popped them out, worked my way back, then it came apart uh, a little bit better. Now, uh, you know, obviously it's a learning experience. It didn't quite go as smoothly as I would have liked, but I got everything off. Um, and now I have a much, much easier uh, access to everything. And then it's gonna be even more once I drop that subframe. I'll show you guys the bolts that I have in just a minute. I've, have, I've got like extended subframe bolts that you can buy, they're a, they're a factory part number, so you can go into a Mercedes dealership or a smart dealership and order the bolts and they allow you to bring that, that whole subframe down. Uh, basically you support the motor and support everything, put the longer bolts in and then slowly let everything down. Um, so my next step now I think is gonna be to do that, but I did wanna show you a couple of things, just set that out of the way. So first of all, if we have a look in here, I don't know if you guys can see down in that hole, but um, there's a body plug in the bottom of the hole here uh, where there's a wiring harness coming through. Oh, I guess it's further forward. Uh, you can see it from inside here. I know this is a bad angle, but right here by the secondary air injection pump, there's this body plug here and it wasn't into its hole. So it was uh, the whole inside of the body is just exposed to the elements here and that's where that mouse would have gotten in to make its nest in the tail light. So at least that's figured out. I can put that body plug back in its proper uh, location. And then uh, here, very easy to say, see that that like rear crash bar is just annihilated. Um, here's my flex pipe that I'm gonna have to cut out and weld. This one's obviously been replaced once before, but we're gonna do another quick job on that one. Um, my heat shield here <laughs> looks like it needs some help um, but otherwise you know, things don't look too bad back here I took the skin off the tailgate here not because I had to but because it had that uh, backup camera uh, hooked up and I just wanted to get all that wiring out and have a look and I also want to replace the uh, the license plate lights because um, and these ones actually still work, which is surprising, but these fail quite often. I have some LEDs to replace that with, so I'm gonna be doing that. So right now I have my longer bolts here for dropping that subframe. There's two bolts here at the back, two at the, at the front there on either side, and uh, I've got two long and two short of these bolts for replacing. You can see the, the difference in length there. And um, basically, the two short ones go in the into the front locations. The two longer ones go in the rear locations. Now some people, what they do to try and drop the motor if you don't have these bolts, is you can take the, the rear bolts, which are longer, put them in the front locations, and then support the rear with like a jack stand or something. But if you want to go to your Mercedes or smart dealer and try to get these bolts, I do have a part number here. I don't know how easily it's you're gonna see that. But if you're interested in that part number, you can hopefully freeze frame that and uh, read that part number off and go get that from your Mercedes or smart dealer. Did I mention too that uh, if you're thinking about working on these smart cars, you're gonna need a set of these external torxes. So this is a, an E20, 
I think E18 actually. And that's the one uh, for those subframe bolts. So you got that external torques on there and that's what you're gonna need for a lot of the stuff on this car. So you wanna be a smart owner that works on your own car. Think about getting a set of torques and a set of e-torques because you're gonna need them. So I'm about ready to drop that subframe now. I'm gonna go real slow on that jack and hopefully uh, we're not gonna be doing any testing of the tensile strength of our wiring harness or uh, any connections like that. We'll be able to just drop this thing nice and smooth and not mess anything up. Okay, so right as soon as I started to drop this down, uh, it, I realized I hadn't taken the fender liner off on this side and there's a little plug here into that subframe and because this thing's held up here, it's gonna uh, keep your subframe from going down. And if memory serves, I think there might be something else in here, like the air intake pipe I gotta watch for as well. So I'm gonna pop this off, take this fender liner off and see what's up. So here's my intake hose over here. I'm just gonna uh, disconnect. Ah, oh, this thing's loose. I don't know if that's supposed to be loose. No, I think that's supposed to be mounted to the body, but I can probably just pull that guy off with a little encouragement. So something else I just remembered, which is gonna be very difficult to see, but I'm gonna try is up here on the left-hand side of the car, right by the frame rail, you can see where my, my flex hoses here for the rear brakes. You got these flexible hoses and these are the lines for the wheel speed sensors. Um, all kind of come onto the, that rear suspension tube here, but they're all attached to the frame up here with this little plastic block just up in here. And there's an eight millimeter, I think, head um, bolt here that we can undo and that'll give me a little bit more freedom with that. Okay, so when I said eight millimeter, obviously what I meant was 10 millimeter, but now that I've undone that, I've got a lot more movement uh, possible on these brake lines and wheel speed sensors, because as you can see, I've got a long way for the subframe to keep coming down before it uh, sits on the end of that bolt there. Um, but this will allow everything to, to flex and hopefully not break anything on the way down. You can already see like I'm getting a lot more room and I'm only about halfway down on this side. Uh, so I'll have lots of easy access to the top of the motor once everything's undone. Over here on this side, looks like everything's still loose enough that uh, I can keep coming down the rest of the way. Okay, so now we've got the whole uh, subframe down on its bolts there. I didn't hear anything spontaneously disassembling itself, so that's a good thing. So just before we go any further, I wanna show at the front of the subframe here, you can see like we've got the AC compressor here, uh, the alternators up here, and we've got like our AC lines and rad hoses. But over here, we've got part of the e-brake um, handle assembly, and it goes with the subframe here, but you gotta make sure when we put this uh, subframe back up that that lines up with that hole and goes into it. Now I've got this the e-brake uh, down so not engaged right now and when that goes back up uh, into the hole everything should be fine but I should have mentioned that before I got going that you want to make sure that your e-brake is down so the e-brake isn't applied before you drop this subframe. So as you can see here lots of room on the top of the motor easy to get at everything uh, normally I wouldn't go as far as dropping the subframe, but I just figured since I had so much work to do on the car that it would be a lot easier for me to just drop it and have easy access to all the stuff. It makes changing the spark plugs really easy, uh, gives me real good access to the air filter, obviously the alternator because that's something that needs to change. That serpentine belt's easy to get at, secondary air injection pump right here, uh, easy access to the top of the shocks so I can undo those and swap those shocks out. So 
for it, for this particular case, you know, dropping the subframe I think is uh, a big advantage.